One pleasant evening in the city streets of Dallas, seasoned hitman Jason Renshaw listens to his iPod while driving to a toy factory for his next job. Meanwhile, inside the factory, toy maker and CEO Hans Morris looks adoringly at a toy astronaut and the other playthings on a shelf. He then unboxes a limited edition fairy musical figurine and inspects it under a magnifying glass desk lamp. In the parking lot, Renshaw observes Hans' office window through a pair of binoculars and sees that he isn't there yet. He checks the time and takes a sip of coffee. Back in the factory, Hans takes the fairy figurine, turns the lights off, and makes his way up to his office. He uses his car to open the security lock on the door and enters. He looks out the window, unknowingly revealing his presence to the hitman outside. He picks up a framed picture of his mother, with a note scribbled on it reading, Best from your number one ideas, girl. Love, mom. A small illustration of a smiling image with two horns ends the note. Outside, Renshaw places covers over his shoes and assemble his tranquilizer gun. He puts on gloves, a rubber mask, and a baseball cap to complete his disguise. Inside the security surveillance room of the factory, the security guard hears the sound of a duck quacking and follows it to the entrance. Behind the glass door, he sees that a phone on the ground is producing the sound. Words start to appear on the screen, telling him that the phone will explode in 10 seconds. As the countdown begins, the security guard hurriedly opens the glass door, picks up the phone, and attempts to throw it away from the building. Before he can get rid of the phone, Renshaw grabs him and puts him to sleep with a tranquilizer gun. Then, Renshaw takes the security guard's key card and keys and enters the building. Renshaw makes his way to the security surveillance room. He switches all the cameras and screens off using a key and removes his mask. A few minutes later, Renshaw shoots another security guard with a tranquilizer gun and knocks him out. He drags the guard's body into a room and makes his way up to Han's office. He uses the key card to enter and sees Han's behind his desk. Hans has a terrified look on his visage as he realizes what Renshaw is there to do. Renshaw shoots Hans with a real gun four times, once between the eyes and thrice in the chest. Hans kneels over his desk in a room full of his toy creations. Renshaw approaches Hans' body to check for a pulse, ensuring he gets the job done. He sees the framed picture of Hans' mother, blood splattered on the broken glass. Then, he spots the fairy musical figurine and puts it in his pocket. A few hours later, Renshaw listens to his iPod and celebrates with a glass of champagne on his plane ride home. He texts his client, informing them to watch the news and to wire his payment. A beautiful passenger taps him on the shoulder, startling him. She mouths, asking him for gum, and he picks up his bag from the floor. He sees the fairy figurine and suspiciously tries to conceal it from the woman before handing her a stick of gum. In the San Francisco airport, Renshaw watches a new report of the toy maker's demise. On the escalator, he shifts his eyes away guiltily from the gaze of a doll in a person's bag. Renshaw takes a taxi to his apartment building, where he sees a green alien toy on the concierge's desk. In his lavish 40th floor penthouse apartment, he takes a toy duck floating in the pool and moves it to the barbecue grill on the balcony. Hours later, Renshaw gets the fairy figurine from his bag and places it in a glass display case along with his other memento from previous hit jobs. He reads an email on his computer, notifying him that his payment's been wired. Minutes later, he falls asleep on his couch from exhaustion. That evening, he receives a package addressed to him bearing the same illustrated smiling image from the toy maker's mother's note. He carefully opens the package with a kitchen knife and finds a Jungle Army footlight locker toy box made by the Morris Toy Company. A sticker on the box promises bonus surprises. Renshaw carefully opens the lid to reveal dozens of green army men and vehicles. He continues to wonder who could have possibly known where he lives as he makes his way to the other end of the room to get a drink. He hears a noise and sees that the toy footlocker box has fallen off the kitchen counter and onto the floor. He walks around to inspect the back of the counter from afar and confirms there is nothing behind the box to cause it to fall. When he returns to the kitchen, all of the box's contents are gone. Behind him, the curtains move on their own, and he approaches them to check. Suddenly, a table lamp loses power. When he goes to investigate, he finds that the lamp's cord is severed. Moments later, one of the kitchen lights goes out as well. Annoyed, he inspects it, but then feels a stabbing pain in his foot. He removes the object sticking out of his shoe and sees that it's a toy gun with a bayonet. He walks away from the kitchen and gets on his knees to peek underneath the oven. Several small flashes of gunfire spark from under the oven and hit him on the side of his neck. He yelps in pain and quickly gets back up. A few seconds later, more gunfire comes from underneath the couch and a bazooka projectile hits Renshaw's leg. He falls to the floor and rolls down a short flight of stairs to escape the gunfire. He runs to the bathroom for safety and closes the door. Inside the bathroom, he uses a small mirror to observe what's happening outside safely. All of the light fixtures in his apartment are being taken down with guns and bazookas. The gunfire ceases for a moment but resumes only to fire directly at the mirror Renshaw is holding. He shuts the door again and takes the bullets and sharp nail embedded in his skin in front of the mirror. Renshaw goes to his connecting bedroom and takes his gun with a silencer from a bedside table. He exits the room and fires at the bottom of the couch as he gets hit by more bullets. 
A bazooka projectile narrowly misses him as he makes his way behind the minibar. He grabs a machine gun from his liquor cabinet and proceeds to fire back. He removes the couch cushions and unloads a magazine's worth of bullets. Renshaw flips the couch over to expose the Green Army men battalions laid out like on a battlefield. The Green Army men are helping the ones that have lost limbs up off the floor. They flip their toy jeep upright and use it to get away from Renshaw. The bodies of their fallen brothers are scattered around them. Renshaw sees two survivors about to fire on him and crushes them under his shoe. The other soldiers fire their guns and load a bazooka, but Renshaw is able to hit them before they can launch a projectile. Moments later, Renshaw hears the whirring sound of helicopter blades as three choppers fly from beneath a table towards him. They simultaneously attack with rockets and fly at him, wounding him with the blades. He picks up his gun to fire at one of the helicopters, but retreats to the bathroom as he gets overwhelmed. Inside the bathroom, Renshaw is shaken as he looks at himself in the mirror. Open gashes bleed on his forehead and hand. He disinfects and wraps up his wounds with bandages. As he catches his breath, a rocket blows a hole through the bathroom door, and one of the helicopters swoops in. Renshaw catches the helicopter using a towel and wraps it up. He smashes it forcefully onto the floor and stomps on it with his foot. Another helicopter enters through the hole, and he fires back with his gun until the chopper retreats. Renshaw notices the soldiers under the towel are still moving, so he picks it up from the floor and flushes the fragments down. He hears the soldiers still rattling inside the bowl. Without thinking twice, he takes a blow dryer, turns it on, and drops it into the bowl. His entire apartment loses power, and Renshaw immediately regrets his decision. Renshaw sits down on a stool and rolls up one pant leg to sew up a large gash wound. He sees a can of bug spray under the sink and puts it inside his pocket. The toy soldiers slip a note under the bathroom door telling Renshaw to surrender. He writes them back a defiant response and slips it back under the door. He peeks through the hole and sees the soldiers getting ready to fire multiple rockets. He moves out of the way as several rockets blast large holes in the door. Finding himself cornered, Renshaw gets up to the bathroom counter and climbs out the window onto the ledge of the building. He carefully traverses the narrow ledge as a toy helicopter flies out the bathroom window. While he is standing precariously on a narrow cement beam, the helicopter comes up behind him and fires, hitting his cheek. The helicopter circles around to confront him, continuously firing until it runs out of bullets. Renshaw hits the helicopter, and it goes up in flames before crashing into the building. Renshaw leaves his empty weapon, and continues along the ledge on the side of the building. He finally makes it to his balcony, where he spies on the other soldiers standing around their jeep. He finds the soldiers with the rocket launcher still waiting outside his bathroom door. He tiredly looks around the balcony for weapons and sees a fire extinguisher, a lighter, and the toy duck he brought out there earlier. A few minutes later, the toy duck quacks as it floats above the pool, catching the attention of the toy soldiers near the jeep. While they are distracted, Renshaw enters his apartment carrying the fire extinguisher and sprays the white smoke over the soldiers at the rocket launcher. They turn the launcher around but are unable to see anything in the white haze. Renshaw ties the fire extinguisher's handle so that it continues to spray over the soldiers even when he puts it down. The soldiers near the jeep realize they've been deceived. Therefore, two of them get in the vehicle and drive around Renshaw in circles while firing at him. He takes the bug spray and the lighter and uses both to create a flamethrower. The roaring fire swallows the jeep as it drives into a wall and explodes. Renshaw lets out a primal victory scream, but three soldiers fire their guns at him from the floor. Renshaw crouches low to the floor with his makeshift flamethrower and subdues the soldiers with it. He grabs a knife from his kitchen and chops up the toy soldiers. The remaining soldiers with the rocket launcher hit the toy duck, alerting Renshaw. The fire extinguisher runs out, and the white haze clears around the toy soldiers. They look around for Renshaw, but he is right behind them, holding the footlocker above him, and he crushes them. Later, Renshaw plays with the toy jeep on the countertop, where he's collected all of what's left of the toy soldiers and the vehicles. He begins an inventory of the box's contents, ensuring that he's taken care of them before he dumps all the fragments inside the trash compactor. The injured Renshaw takes a dip in his pool, convinced he won. However, he hears something drop into the pool and looks around to see what it is. He cries out in pain and scrambles out of the pool when something slices his wrist. He returns to his room to sew up the gash on his wrist, but his shaking hands make it difficult. Moments later, he leaves his room fully dressed with a bandage on his wrist. He takes an urgent care clinic card from his refrigerator door and makes his way out of his apartment and into the elevator. In the elevator down, he hears a noise coming from the top of the elevator, moving down to the control panel. Suddenly, the control panel explodes, the elevator stops, and the lights go out. The hatch on the top of the elevator slides open, and a toy commando jumps down. Armed with only a small flashlight, Renshaw has a hard time spotting it. His Achilles heel and wrist are sliced open by the stealthy commando. Renshaw removes his belt and uses it as a tourniquet on his wrist. Renshaw peeks inside the destroyed control panel and sees the lone commando inside. The commando sneers at Renshaw and continues climbing up to the ceiling to escape. Renshaw hears loud blasts and climbs through the hatch, 
where he discovers that the elevator is suspended between floors. The commando fires at Renshaw's foot, destroying the back of his shoe and wounding his heel. While Renshaw lies on his back, the commando looks down on him from a perch. Renshaw sees another elevator on its way down from above them and times his tumble perfectly to land on top of it. He opens the hatch and drops down inside the elevator. He doesn't notice the commando piggybacking on his shoe. The commando climbs onto Renshaw's body and stands over his chest. They exchange primal screams as the commando stabs Renshaw in the chest multiple times. He swats away the commando, who quickly gets back up. They reach the lobby, and the elevator doors open. However, Renshaw is too weak to crawl out or call for help. The commando walks closer toward him, and Renshaw snaps out of his feigned unconsciousness and slaps the commando down to the floor. He keeps the commando pinned to the floor and drags it between the closing doors. The commando holds out its arms to try to stop the doors from crushing it, but its arms give away, and it gets smashed. A few seconds later, Renshaw hears a beeping sound coming from the commando's backpack. He opens the bag and sees an orange glow inside. As the beeping sound gets quicker, Renshaw lets out a defeated laugh and lays the toy on his chest. A massive blast destroys the elevator and rocks the building. Back inside the apartment, the sticker on the toy footlocker box reading, plus bonus surprises, peels away to show that the surprises include a commando and a made-to-scale thermonuclear weapon. On the glass display case, the fairy musical figurine starts to turn and play music on its own. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.